Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here, and I have some news. On February 25th, 2022, there will be new episodes. Holy sh new episodes. I gotta prepare. Oh wait, it says February 25th, and it's after February 25th. Well, good thing I saw the new episodes, and man, did I like them. How do you prove you're truly a fan of your favorite show or movie? By isolating yourself and having that show or movie be the only thing that matters that day. Everybody has their own specific franchise that they consider their favorite, whether it's a movie franchise, TV show, or video game, and they always want to be able to keep up with the latest releases for it. If somebody doesn't believe you're a true fan, there are two ways to prove that you are. The first way is to always be there for the live premiere of the newest episode, release of a new game, etc. on the day they come out, and the other is to tell others to fuck off. Me personally, I prefer watching the new episode the day it premieres on live TV. And since my favorite franchise is Spongebob, I always keep up with new episodes whenever they come out. Every day a new episode premieres, I have my own little mini tradition for it. I always wear a shirt that would have Spongebob on it, or sometimes it would be a shirt that has yellow on it, but doesn't have an actual picture of Spongebob on it. As long as it's yellow and or has Spongebob on it, it counts. Sometimes I would eat Spongebob related food, but that's only if I could find it. I don't always actually try to find Spongebob themed food, but if I do see some, I would buy it most of the time. But knowing Nickelodeon, they air new Spongebob episodes whenever the fuck they feel like it. But if I don't find the food, it's not the biggest deal. When the premiere comes on, I clear my schedule or just work around the new episode. Like if I had homework, I don't do it at the time of the show. Then afterwards, I would go on to edit my own personal PowerPoint to show that a new episode had aired by adding the plot and title card for the episode and add animation to the text and picture. It's not the most exciting, but hey, it's what I like to do, and considering how scarce Nickelodeon has been airing new episodes from seasons 12 and 13, I don't get to experience it a lot these days. But obviously, the older you get, the less you're able to watch them live as soon as they come out because you have to deal with the pain of growing up. Unless you're the Rugrats, they've been the same age ever since the show started in 1991, ended in 2004, and the reboot in 2021. But throughout high school, my dad wanted me to focus on my studies, so I didn't really get a job until after high school, but since I was home more often doing schoolwork, it was easier for me to keep up with new episodes when they came out. Of course, I always looked on the Wikipedia article, which always stayed up to date with new episodes, so that helped. Later down the line, I discovered this website called tvschedulesaptoit.com, and not only did it help keep me up to date on new premieres, but it showed all the actual reruns so I could pick and choose what episode to watch if I ever had free time. Whenever I hear about a new episode, I was always excited. And obviously I liked the episode, regardless as to how the fandom as a whole liked it, but I think the best part, other than seeing this new episode for the first time, was the experience itself. You're right there at this very moment this new episode comes out. You're one of the first few people to experience it live. Seeing it live at the moment it premieres on TV feels much more special than when you watch it the first time it comes on in a rerun within the next few days or so. Sure, you can record it so it's on your DVR, and then you can watch it when you have a moment, and that can definitely give you the illusion of watching it live for the first time, because it'll still have the same commercials and all that, but it still doesn't feel the same. And I know what I'm talking about. There's also a specific way that I like to watch the new Spongebob episodes when they come out. When the show aired episodes in full screen format, they looked like this. I had been watching the episodes like that ever since I was a kid, and when you watch the episodes in a certain way slash format, you get used to it and it can kind of feel wrong watching an episode like this on an HD channel or something like that where there would be black bars on the side. And then in 2009, episode 240, Truth or Square, from season 6 premiered, and that was the first episode to be in a widescreen format. The way I saw it at the time was like this, with these black bars on the top and bottom of the screen. A few years later in 2012 came episode 335, It's a Spongebob Christmas, from season 8, which was also in widescreen. And starting with season 9 that same year, every episode was in widescreen, even the regular 11 minute episodes. I always watched them in that format and strangely enjoyed watching them like that, but when they came out on DVD, they were presented as if they were on an HD channel or something, and I get why, but I just never really liked it that much. If it was a rerun, I was okay with it, but watching a live premiere like that for the first time kind of left an unpleasant taste in my mouth. 
There have been some times where I actually missed a live premiere and had to record it. In November 2018, Nickelodeon aired episodes 460, Squirrel Jelly, and 461, The String, from season 11. I had training for a job in college that morning, so I missed it. I watched a rerun that day, and while I was still excited to see it, it just didn't feel the same as watching the live premiere. My TV was also formatted in that way where the widescreen episodes filled the whole screen, so I had to watch the recording at my house in my hometown. When I went home, I watched it, and while I still liked watching it in the format I enjoy the most, it lacked a bit of that magic. Even though it was a recording of the live premiere, I was watching it on a different day and time. So I think what I enjoy the most is the true authentic experience itself. Watching that new episode on live TV as soon as it comes on just has a certain charm to it. A kind of charm that can't be replicated with DVR recordings or subscription services. It's like buying a new video game or game console on launch day or seeing a movie in theaters the day it comes out. Of course, these are all very different. For a movie, tickets for a specific showing on premiere day can sell out quickly. For a game console, those are first come first served as soon as they come out, and people tell others to go f themselves by buying multiple to sell for 10 times their asking price on eBay. For a new video game, people do pre-order them, but most of them are already readily available at launch, so there's no real need to pre-order, especially if you only buy digital games. As for the show, just grab the remote, turn on the TV, sit down, and that's it. Of course, you'd have to pay for cable or streaming depending on what you have, but you don't really think about that when you're watching it live for the first time. To be fair, that applies to pretty much everything I just mentioned, but you get the idea. While all those experiences are different, they have one thing in common, and that is experiencing the magic of being one of the first few people to experience this new thing firsthand. Of course, I'd argue watching the new episode of your favorite show might be the least complicated of everything I just went over, but all of this is down to your own personal preference. And my personal preference with a live premiere of a new episode of my favorite show is wearing a yellow slash Spongebob related shirt, watching a new episode right as it premieres. It was also kind of interesting to see how many new views each episode was getting on that premiere night. Unfortunately, clearly the views have been going down in recent years. Of course, it could be traced to more people getting rid of the cable subscriptions in favor of Netflix. In some cases, that makes sense. But from what I've experienced, the episode would always be released on either iTunes or subscription services after they premiere on TV. But I also think it's because of when they're airing the episodes. They air them on Friday nights now. The show clearly got better views and ratings when they premiered new episodes on Saturday mornings. But this also applies to all their other cartoons, not just Spongebob. If they want people to watch their other cartoons, I think they'd do far better if they aired on Saturday mornings instead of Friday nights. Especially because people often think Saturday mornings when thinking cartoons, but I guess Nickelodeon just doesn't give a f I remember there was a time when I did treat premieres of some of my other favorite shows kinda similar to Spongebob. Other shows like iCarly, Victorious, or The Fairly Odd Parents. I would also want to watch as soon as they premiered, even if I only watched those episodes once and never again. But at a certain point, I stopped caring entirely and only watched the SpongeBob Live. And that moment was when The Fairly Odd Parents was in season 10. It was the show's worst season, and they stopped airing new episodes on Nickelodeon and only aired them on Nicktoons, which is basically sending The Fairly Odd Parents off to die on that channel. This was also at a point where there were no good live action shows on Nickelodeon, and SpongeBob was all I really cared about on this network at this point. For any other show, I wouldn't give a f but that's also because everything on the network these days consists of either no acting talent, shoehorning in modern bullshit, or milking the viral stuff. Which is why the early seasons of Spongebob and basically everything before 2013 is when Nickelodeon was good. As off topic as I may or may not have gotten there, what I wanted to put out was my own personal experience with new Spongebob episodes and why I will always prefer watching them live on TV when they release to the public for the first time. That experience was always a great feeling, and I still feel that way to this day. No matter how many times I've watched a new premiere live, or how many seasons the show has, it's a feeling that can never be replicated with subscription services. After all that, you might be thinking, but Mikey, you said you were Spongebob's biggest fan, and yet you haven't seen every episode as soon as they came out? See, that's where you're wrong. I never said anything about watching every single episode as soon as they came out. All I said was that I have seen every single episode at least once. So there you go. I'm still the biggest fan of the show. All in all, I will still cherish the feeling of watching the new episodes live as they come out. 
And if any of you out there shame me for not just going with a subscription service, why do you even care what I do?